For today, you're going to learn the basics of Chapter 17. The very first thing you're going to do is go through a very brief overview of Chapter 17 and the key concepts that come in this chapter. So please take notes quickly over the highlights of which I'm about to present to you. After this brief presentation, you're going to watch the video Troubled Waters and answer the questions on a separate sheet of paper. This video looks at water pollution and how it's impacting the environment and human health, which ties both in from Chapter 20 and Chapter 17. You're, after that, you're going to work on Toxtown and Infectious Disease Assignment. You're going to be working on this with a partner, and I have listed the partners on my website just beneath the assignment. A handout will also be given to you with the information about the Toxtown and Infectious Disease portion of the assignment. So you will both have a laptop in order to complete this assignment. We will continue working on this on Wednesday, so if you don't have a lot of time to work on it today, you will be working on it again on Wednesday when I return. Be ready at the start of class on Wednesday to answer the Chapter 17 FRQ. So for Chapter 17, it's all about things that harm human health and, of course, that which harm the environment and species there. These potential hazards, if you will, can both be natural and man-made, but of course the most deadly coming from man-made chemicals that we have derived from oil and other places. Risk is the possibility of suffering from harm or for, from some sort of external source. This could be pathogen or toxic chemical of some kind. In order to understand how harmful something is, we do a risk assessment. And this essentially tells us through scientific processes how harmful something can be to harm our health or the environment as well. After we've determined the uh, potential harm, we can then develop a plan. So risk management is working to see how what we can do to reduce the possible risk or effects of some sort of toxin, natural disaster, etc. And what costs are involved with this. So some of the many hazards we face every single day. There are five major types. First, biological, the pathogens which you covered in the water pollution chapter, but viruses and bacteria, protozoa that can cause illness. Then of course we have chemical, physical, cultural, and lifestyle choices. Lifestyle choices seem to have the most impact on our health, but is the most preventable since it's related to the decisions we make in our daily life. Here are different pathways of disease and how we can become exposed to different pathogens. 12.5 million people are killed each year by these top seven infectious diseases. You can see that number one is flu and pneumonia together caused by bacteria and viruses, down to measles at number seven with 800,000 people per year. Your Toxtown infectious disease assignment is going to allow you to do some research to be more in depth about these different diseases and how they can harm us along with others. Here are the pathways which toxic chemicals move through our environment. We have gone into this in looking at bioaccumulation, biomagnification, farming, and the pesticides that we apply, and of course the fuels and so forth we use in boats, and just how all of this circulates throughout the environment and we come in contact with it, and of course how it affects the environment itself. Some of the chemicals that can affect our immune, nervous, and endocrine systems seem to be of most concern. These do include natural and synthetic chemicals that weaken or harm all of these systems. If you look in the textbook on page 448 through 453, there are some specific examples of these chemicals. The factors that will determine how harmful things can be are related to several things. Toxicity is the concept of how bad or how harmful something is, but that toxicity is different for everybody because it's dependent on the dose of which you are exposed or ingesting, how old you are, the genetic makeup of you or the species in the environment, some people exhibit what's called multiple chemical sensitivity. They are highly sensitive to many different chemicals, which can make their health even worse if they're exposed to many different chemicals. The solubility and persistence of the chemical. This again goes back to the bioaccumulation and biomagnification. As it builds up in the fatty tissue, it can start to cause more problems later on throughout your life as you accumulate more in your system because it is persistent and it's not soluble by water. And then, of course, the concept with that biomagnification. So scientists often use lab animals to determine just how toxic something is. 
but of course there's a lot of controversy with that and a lot of people do not like how inhumane these methods can be. So some alternatives to that in trying to understand the toxicity of chemicals, we can replace animals with other things, such as computer simulations, tissue culture in individual animal cells in a petri dish or lab, chicken egg membranes, and then we have to also consider what are the effects of the mixtures of toxic chemicals. Would these substitutes be able to accurately tell us if different chemicals mix, what outcome could we possibly see as far as toxicity? The Dirty Dozen are a group of POPs, persistent organic pollutants, that were deemed to be of most concern by the Stockholm Convention of 2001. It's an international treaty that uh, many nations got together to decide that they needed to reduce the production use and eventually eliminate some significant POPs that are causing a lot of harmful effects to human health and the environment. This is the list of the Dirty Dozen, and out in the parentheses it tells you essentially the source of that particular toxic substance, that pop. You will recognize a lot of these from Silent Spring if you have started to read that book, which is why it coincides with the unit we're in now. A lot of these you can see also are stemming from our use of pesticides, some of which have been banned, but again, since they are persistent, they continue to be a problem. At your house, you have many different sources of toxic chemicals and so forth that you can come into contact every single day. And this ranges from not just the water supply, but the materials we use every single day. Also the furniture, carpet, TVs, all of these very commonplace things contain some of those persistent organic pollutants that can easily harm us. At this time, you will need to get out a sheet of paper so that you can watch Troubled Waters and answer the questions with the video. Upon completion of the video, you're going to turn in my sheet and your answers and you're going to receive the handout for Toxtown and the infectious disease assignment. You will need to please sign out a laptop so that you and your partner can work on this assignment. At the very least, get a document started so that you have something to begin with when you get to class on Wednesday. If you're using Google, please be sure to share with me and your partner.